This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is a scale analysis of the continuity equation. The continuity equation is the equation of conservation of mass, and it was derived in an earlier lecture. We use this idea of a parcel or volume that is fixed in space, and there's mass flowing through that parcel, and that mass that flows through is related to the mass flux, which is rho times u. We arrived at the continuity equation that the partial of rho with respect to t, where rho is the density, which is the local time rate of change of density, is equal to the negative of the divergence of the mass flux. We can rewrite the continuity equation taking it out of that vector notation and rewriting the right-hand side in terms of the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z of the components of the mass flux in the u, v, and w velocity directions. We can then use the product rule, which is written here, and then rewrite the continuity equation as 1 over rho big D rho dt, hence the material derivative, is equal to minus the divergence of simply the velocity field. In order to do the scale analysis, we're going to approach it a little bit differently than we did with the horizontal momentum equation. We are going to divide the pressure into an average plus a deviation from that average. And that average is going to be assumed to be a function of height only, taking advantage of the fact that there's a very strong function of pressure with height z. Likewise, there is a similar function of density rho. Therefore, we're going to take also a rho naught is equal to rho naught of z. We, of course, have the hydrostatic balance, and we will have the hydrostatic balance of that mean state as dp dz is equal to minus rho naught of g. We are then going to add to that average state a deviation which will be p prime and rho prime. The deviations will each be functions of x, y, z, and t. Hence, they are fully variable in both space and time. If we then take the definitions of p in terms of an average plus a deviation, and place them into the continuity equation as we expanded it out in terms of the components of the mass flux. Then we use the assumptions that we prescribed on the mean state. We can eliminate this term, that is the partial time derivative of rho naught, because it's not a function of t. We can eliminate the terms that are a derivative of rho naught with respect to x and with respect to y, again by the way the problem was set up. What we arrive at is an equation for the deviation density, that is the difference from the average, the partial with respect to time, hence the local time rate of change, is going to be equal to this term here, which is an advection term. This is the advection of the density deviation. We're going to have a term that's rho prime and rho naught, each in terms of the divergence of the velocity field. And then we are left with a term that is the vertical advection of w d rho naught dz. We're going to divide through by rho naught and then we're going to assume that the deviations, the rho prime divided by rho naught, is approximately 1 over 100, that is 10 to the minus 2, and that this is much, much less than 1. This is an assumption that the deviations in density do not vary much from the mean state, and hence they also are very strongly defined by the altitude at which the deviations are occurring. After we divide through by rho naught, 
and we bring this advective term over to the left hand side of the equation, we get 1 over rho naught times this term here, which will ultimately look like the material derivative of rho prime is equal to minus. We have the rho prime over rho naught del dot u, a term which we will eliminate because of this assumption that rho prime over rho naught is much, much less than 1. We eliminate it relative to this term, which has rho naught over rho naught in front of it, hence that is 1, hence since they're multiplied both by the divergence, this term can be ignored. And then we have this term here of w over rho naught d rho naught dz. This is simply rewriting that equation with these terms removed. If we then use our scaling parameters for rho prime u length and rho naught and the relationship of rho prime to rho naught again is up here, then we get that this term is 10 to the minus 7 per second and this term w over h is 10 to the minus 6 per second. So they're within about an order of magnitude of each other. So now we want to look at the velocity divergence. Therefore we're going to write out this del dot u term. We're going to take the du dx and the dv dy, which is the divergence of the horizontal velocity, and we're going to look at them separately. Therefore what we've done in this equation here is we did some rearrangement then we've expanded out the divergence of the velocity field here. These two terms scale as u over l, but they are of the opposite sign. I refer you to a textbook if you need to know more about that. Intuitively, once we get into a flow like this, you will see this strong relationship of the flow being largely in the horizontal plane. And what we will be getting to is a relationship between the divergence in the horizontal plane and the vertical velocity field. Hence what you tend to see is that in flows the divergence will have d by dx and dv by dy of the opposite sign because it's diverging. And if you were to draw a picture of what we might call canonical divergent flows and then use your finite difference approaches to make estimates, sign estimates of du dx and dv dy, you would develop some physical intuition of why they are of the opposite sign. Hence, even though they're the same scale, they are always opposing each other and we can come to the conclusion that this scales as 10 to the minus 6. What we're going to do now is to cancel what we would call the relatively small terms. That's then going to leave us with this divergence here of the velocity plus this WD rho naught dz divided by rho naught is equal to 0. Remember that the horizontal variations of rho naught are 0 and hence we can essentially add these zeros back into the equation and this then gives us a form where we have a du dx here and a u d rho naught dx here. Remember this was a zero so we can add it back and what we can do is multiply through here by rho naught and we can then rewrite this as the divergence of rho naught u which is the mass flux of the background field. This might not seem intuitive, but it is a technique that since we essentially own these equations, we can come back to a term that looks like this. One of the reasons we do this is that from a physical point of view, this is a relatively easy term to understand, that is the divergence of the mass flux. 
With that, we then have an equation that looks like this. Here we have the divergence of the velocity field. We have this term here. We're going to rearrange this by taking the dw dz from here, the w term here, hence we're going to bring that over to this side, and then we're going to take the divergence of the horizontal velocity, which is here. We're going to move it to the other side of the equation, which of course introduces this minus sign. With the benefit of the experience that we're developing about the product rule and looking at terms that look like this, you should be able to recognize that this is now the differential of d rho naught w. What you can do to confirm that is you can take rho naught w and then take d by dz of that and just write it out and you will see that you can get to this form of the equation where you do have to multiply through by this rho naught here. Then you will have an equation that is in fact a perfect differential in z and you can integrate that equation and you will end up with this approximation of the continuity equation that rho naught w is approximately the integral of the horizontal divergence field with respect to height, and there is a negative sign there. What that tells you is that large scale, synoptic scale is what we call these, large scale, synoptic scale, vertical motions are proportional to the vertically integrated horizontal divergence. That is, when you have a horizontal divergence or the negative of divergence, convergence, when you have a horizontal convergence, then the fluid responds by conserving mass with a vertical velocity field. If you go back to the very first lecture on mass conservation, which was done from a very general perspective, I gave an example of where you did some heating at the surface, which caused some air to rise, caused some convergence, and one of the purposes of that example was to start to see this relationship between vertical motion and convergence or divergence. And with that, we have scaled the continuity equation.